Welcome everybody to Closers, brought to you by Man Cave Sports. I am uh, the DA, David Arjma, and as with me as always, the man, James Kouloudianos. What's going on, everybody? How are you? Oh, you changed it. I thought you were going, what's going on, Hello, everybody? No, no Dr. Nick today. All right, let, let me do it for you. Hi, everybody. Oh, it's perfect. It is perfect. I'm not even a huge like Simpsons fan. I know you are. You're like this one of the Simpsons dorks. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so perfect. I, I do give you that. I want to do next time a video of, of, of Dr. Nick instead of you. Yeah, but then Fox will sue us for stealing Dr. Nick. Ooh, who did knock Dr. Nick's voice? Can we just get them to do it? I think it's Hank Azaria. Oh, perfect. Done. Perfect. Because I want him on anyways. I think uh, Hank Azaria will be the, would be the best baseball announcer of all time. Can we just oh, get him to do baseball? Well, what was that What was that TV show that he used to do? I forgot the name of it, uh, where he was the baseball announcer. It was awesome. Why do you, you put me on the spot? Uh, Why do you? Because it was, it was one of my very favorite TV shows um, the last season. I actually never even finished the last season. It just got I, so weird. I saw. I think I saw three straight seasons on a flight back from Greece or something. It was what a great, great show that was. I wish I could remember the name of it. The moment we stop the show, I'm going to think about it. Um, but uh, one of the teams, the teams that he announced for in the show was actually, I think it was the Royals or something. Maybe, maybe it wasn't the Royals, but it was supposed to be a Midwest team. The Royals are in the playoffs playing the Yankees, but that is not even close to most the most important playoff series right now. What I am loving, I'm loving this Dodgers-Padres series, the Phillies-Mets series, but in particular, this Dodgers-Padres series is one of the most exciting playoff series I've seen in a long time. Uh, game one goes to the Dodgers. Otani, of course, did Otani things and drops an absolute nuke, another bomb. Um, that's just what he does. Game two, it is all Padres all day long. They put up an absolute uh, butt-kicking 10 to two Padres beat the Dodgers and uh, I think they tried to also beat all of the Dodger fans at the same time um, James what did you think going into the series and were you expecting uh, to have a series like this where the fans and the players and everybody's just getting after it yeah, I really did, because you have two teams from California, division rivals, just like the Mets and Phillies. That makes a huge difference. And you have the ultimate villain on the Padres now that I, you know, I absolutely love that. So you have the the face of baseball, the guy that everybody loves. Nobody can badmouth in in Shohei Otani. And then you got Tatis, who's going around making skips and hops and jumps when he's rounding the bases and, you know, jawing with the fans in uh in LA. So yeah, I, I was prepared for this and I'm happy to see it. And you know, good for you, Tatis, be that villain, be that guy that everybody wants to shut up because you know what? Controversy creates cash. Well, I think it, it's absolutely wonderful. This is one of those things I've talked about for a long time. When I played for the Giants, uh, I played for the Dodgers too, but not, not in the big leagues or in the minor leagues, but playing for the Giants in the big leagues, going to Dodger Stadium and, and important playoff atmosphere games, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. We can talk all we want about Red Sox, Yankees, Cubs, Cardinals, Mets, Yankees. I haven't been a part of that. That's one, that's one I haven't seen. Uh, but every other baseball rivalry does not that I have been a part of, and I've been part of all of them except for that Mets-Yankees game, if none of them come close to what it's like playing the Dodgers and being a giant. Now... Mm -hmm. This last couple of years, this is this is one of those things that I am I I am I have become shocked by. By the way, I've become shocked by this is how much of a rivalry that has taken off, and, and it, it was the Giants Dodgers all the time. Now it's like the Giants are secondary; they're not even like in the in the Dodgers viewpoint. It is the Padres and San Diego and just a little bit of swag, this attitude. They are coming after the Dodgers. It was just funny because the Dodgers were the swag team, the, the attitude team, the team that had the charisma, the team that had like, you know, like always looked good in the Dodger blue. They had all the all the superstars come out every game, all the actresses, all actors, all the musicians come out to their games. And now it's like, like the Padres are coming to town. And it's it's kind of like that who's your daddy type of thing, right? Like like the Padres were always secondary. Now the Dodgers are, or the Padres are stepping up and saying, no, this is this is like we own Southern California. We've got the we're we got the the swagger. We go a little bit a little badass here, and we can play with you. 
Yeah, they've got the Cooler City Connect jerseys. Yes, the, by far. Yeah. Uh, they've got they've got the villains. That's the only way to put it. You got Fernando Tatis, the guy who was, who was literally suspended for PEDs that everybody thought was going to be the next big thing. You got the monster contract, and then all of a sudden he got off the PEDs, and he was a little quiet. He wasn't the player that he was. And now all of a sudden playoffs come, and this guy is, you know, he's the, the second coming. Well, I think what happened was he, quiet because Manny Machado was absolutely dominating. dominating. Um, Jackson Merrill is, is doing Jackson Merrill things. Uh, Udarvis is pitching good. I mean, uh, the pitching staff was handling their business. Dylan Cease doing his thing. Um, that, that bullpen throwing incredibly well. And so there was a lot of other players that were stepping up to where before when, when Fernando Tatis Jr. was the man. We were all sitting there like he was the, he was the man he was the superstar Manny Machado had just then then came in and now we got um, Xander Bogarts like there and so we're seeing all these other superstars that have been playing and, and being around um, I mean Profar Profar now being an all star he'd been in the league forever mm-hmm. and now he's an all star and and the, one of my favorite things last night in the game when and he goes out there and robs a home run and then fakes it and pimps it and kind of b- bouncing it around and riling the people up and no one knew who Mookie Betts thought he hit a home run. He, Mookie Betts got the third base before he figured out it wasn't even a home run. I think half the stands, three quarters of the stands thought, assumed it was a home run. The other ones were Padre fans. And and all of a sudden, he's at the ball and then he goes and gives it to a fan. The fan throws it on the field and the other fans are throwing it at him. People are throwing trash in the bullpen. The whole entire bullpen for the Padres are trying to fight some people in the stands in the Dodger Stadium, which, by the way, by the way, down down by the visitors bullpen. Do not. I mean, do not try to fight those fans. One thing I have learned when they when I was in there when I was a giant, they're showing me shanks and, and stuff to to me in the bullpen. I'm like, dude, okay, I'm good. Like, just do your thing. I'm just I'm wearing a uniform, guys. I'm just trying to do my thing. But they literally tried to fight everybody. And out of nowhere, out of nowhere, we're talking about villains. We're talking about villains. One of the Dodger villains, Manny Machado. Mm-hmm. He is the man of reason. He's the man that brought the Padres back together. Tatis is out there doing dry hump in the stands. Profar is trying to fight everybody. The bullpen's literally like just like pumping their chest at, at their fans. And then all of a sudden, Manny Machado pulls the team together, has a little team meeting in the in the locker or in the dugout, locks them back in, and they go out and just dominate six home runs, most home runs in a in a playoff game. And not to mention. Manny Machado was a Dodger who didn't do what he was supposed to do during the playoffs that year. So now the Dodger fans hate him even more because now he's sitting there pimping. Oh, absolutely. And then and that's what making this great. So far, this is turning out into just an incredible uh, series. And this is it's a lot of fun to watch. And I, I, I can't wait to see where this is going. You got something to say. Yeah, the only thing that I want to mention when we're sitting there talking about this series is when is you Darvish going to get the love that he deserves? He's an $18 million a year pitcher. He pitches like a $30 million a year pitcher now. He does it. And he's got the biggest repertoire of any pitcher I've ever seen. What does he have, like nine different pitchers that he can throw? I'm pretty sure he's making up pitches as the game goes. And you, Darvish, speaking of, went seven innings, three hits, one earned run, two walks, and three Ks. Not a whole lot of Ks that's surprising for you, but at the same time, he's facing an incredible Dodgers lineup and just dominated them and 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 shut them down. This is again, he he kind of flies on the radar. I think it's cause, just because of all those other superstars. And the thing is, he's just always really good, uh, and he's he's really really good just consistently. And so that's that's one of those things about you. It, it just it's kind of constant. But um, this is turning Wait, you said into one of those things about me. You, as in the like the all telling you. Oh, or you meant you, like why you, you Darvish? Not you, you. Who? You. Me. Not me, you. Oh, okay, got it. And so, um, he, but but he's just a stud. He's a stud, and he's always been a stud, and he's he's been good playoffs, he's been good regular season. He's never had that just amazing, just like, wow, 18, you know, 20-game winner, Cy Young, where you're just like, Everybody is like, you're the best pitcher in baseball. But he's always been really, really good and close to being that guy. And you know what? That's what aces are a lot of times. That's what aces are. That's what number two guys are. And he's pitched like it for a lot of his career. Now, moving on to the 
the other coast, the East Coast, the, the lesser of the coast, the Mets, Phillies. Um, I'm sorry. The National League gets so perfect how these playoffs are. The Mets, Phillies, um, it is right now. Again, that series, just like the Dodgers, Padres, it's 1-1. Uh, game one, it goes to the Mets in late, super late comeback fashion, like basically the Mets this year. I don't know what, what you want to call them, the heart attack Mets, the, the comeback Mets, whatever it is. They did it against Milwaukee. You see uh, <laughs> Pete Alonso really excited about something right here. I'm assuming the go-ahead home run uh, in the, in the ninth inning against Devin Williams where he had three-run home run into right field. Uh, you're talking about the way to get into the playoffs against the the Braves was just absolutely incredible. One of the best baseball games I had ever seen, especially in an impact game like that. And then you're going into the series against Philly and, and you're going against uh, Wheeler in game one. I believe it was Wheeler or was it Nola game one? Wheeler. Wheeler game one. And they were just getting absolutely dominated and decided to score five runs in the eighth. Like who who does that? And so uh, the the Mets come back, win, win against the Phillies game one. Game two, Phillies walk it off. Castellanos um, walking it off. I'm amazed there wasn't a huge world event because that's what Castellanos tends to do in a uh, <laughs> whenever he decides to hit a home run or do a walk off. James, what are you thinking about this series so far? Are you more excited about this Mets Phillies series or this Dodgers Padres? Take away your Mets fandom, and which one? What series so far have you been more excited about? So when I found out that it was going to be Padres Dodgers and Mets Phillies. All I was thinking about is the following round because who the hell am I going to root for if the Dodgers end up playing the Mets and I'm the biggest <laughs> Otani fan in the world, but I'm also a huge Mets fan, so I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Um, it's very, very difficult for me not to to put my fandom aside in this case and look at the Dodgers-Padres the same way. It's just impossible for me. Um, I'm equally as excited about both, to tell you the truth. I got to see both games it's not like i'm paying attention to one and not paying attention to the other i'm equally as jacked for both of them it's it's amazing um in this series i mean here's the thing about it is what's funny thing is the mets have the largest payroll in baseball let's not forget that like let's let's not just gloss over this right mets have the largest payroll in baseball even though almost half of that is going to two guys that aren't pitching right now (laughs) <laughs> which is so great like 60 some million dollars is not is going to two guys that aren't even on the roster and and they're at home on vacation which is which is absolutely insane blows my mind but it's still the number one payroll in baseball by far we're all excited about it. They're, they're a comeback team they are a chemistry team they're doing it all and they've they've done it in amazing fun fashion <laughs> like in the way they're doing it but like let's stop calling these mets like underdogs i think they're underdogs by just because they played like crap all year long <laughs> and that they're paying more money out the door than they have in the door but like but their payroll is equal basically to the phillies they're they're right there it's just that the phillies the thing about it, the reason we call the mets like like the, the underdogs because they played like crap and two they're not as good of like a team unit for as long and so then we're sitting there going okay the Phillies have been good and a good team and nothing bad comes out of that and like everything stays in house and like it seems like a really good group of guys that are fun and fiery and, and feisty and, and play baseball the right way and then all of a sudden the Mets come back come come into this thing and we're like oh well they're like the comeback kids like oh they're like oh they're the underdogs there's the scrappy ones you're like well they're they're getting paid more well, you know, getting, I, it's a weird. It's a weird contrast. They're getting paid more, but let's not forget though that the Phillies, despite the payroll, are far, far more talented than the New York Mets. There is nobody. I mean, look at the starters for the Mets and look at the starters for the Phillies. Is there? W- would you take? You know, you're, take the, you're gonna, I would take uh, the starting rotation. I assume you're talking about. I would yeah. take them w- without a doubt, and that's. But that's better. That's money wisely spent, right? Right, but then you look at the hit the, the lineup. By the way, who, who who would ever say that money wisely spent by Dombrowski? Right, go figure. But you know, and then you look at the the lineup that the Phillies have, and they're a far better lineup on paper than the Mets. It's not even well, close. Together. I mean, Lindor is the only one on the Mets that you would say is better than anybody on the Phillies. And and then at the same time, I would even have some argue. Right, we would always have arguments like is is Justin Turner and Lindor. Like I would take Justin Turner. I win door this year, but Justin Turner over the course of his career, I I, I think I, I but we're like right here, right? There's there's years Tur- Turner's better, there's years Lindor's better, and we're still just like this, like and Br- Bryce Harper, like would you like take Bryce Harper or Lindor? Like 
Bryce Harper's career has got to, he's got to got it done, you know, and you're like, okay, so it's like, it, so it's one of those things. Then you're saying, okay, then you're like big power hitters. All right, would you take Schwarber or would you take Alonzo? And you're like, right here, like, would you take Castellanos or would you take, I don't know, one of the other Mets guys? I don't know. Uh, but would you take who's catcher, right? You're definitely taking Real Muto. But at the end of the day, like, you're kind of starting going man for man and you're like, wow, they kind of match up a little bit. It's close, but I think it always leans towards the Phillies. Yeah, I think so. it does too. And that, but it, but it's again, I think a lot of times we look at it and go man for man as a team, they're they, they're they're rock steady, and we haven't yeah. seen them waver. And the only spot we really see them waver is the bullpen. That's real. That's really yeah. And that's and I'm still my mind is blown that they haven't had that more locked in. That they didn't go into the season a little bit more like rock steady back and just we know who's getting the ball seven, eight, nine every single day. And this is going to be a problem. And that's how you give up five runs in the eighth and a run in the ninth to lose it to the Mets. I've been waiting to ask you, though, since we both agree that the Phillies are more talented than the Mets, what's more important, chemistry or talent? Because you see, the Mets have the chemistry. There's no question. Chemistry. Chemistry, without a doubt. I, I, I would say that, and that's that's where the Yankees had failed for a while, where they had so much talent, and that's how the Yankees just get close and got close and close. That's how the Dodgers get close and get close, get close. And you're like, what is that difference maker? And that's why some of these teams can surprise you because it's that that chemistry. That and at the same time, playing really good baseball when it matters the most, like that's. That's the end all be all. That's the Tigers. That's that's how the Rockies in 07 like went from nothing, absolutely nothing in August to World Series. It's just by playing really good baseball when it matters the most. I was listening to Jim Bowden yesterday on MLB Network Radio, and he said something so interesting, and I never thought I'd hear this. He said that the Mets GM and manager will be around as long as Sherholtz and Cox were. In Atlanta, Ooh, David Stearns. I would say David Stearns without a doubt. I think there's going to be still a fall off. Here's the thing: is we can say it, they'd be around forever, but if they didn't have August and September, yeah, Mets manager's gone. Oh, I, I, don't think so. I disagree. Okay, or maybe lasted another year until yeah. unless they're 500 in April and then they're gone. And yeah. David Stearns at the same time at the GM is going to be around for a long time. He is a player development monster. He is a developed talent monster. The reason the Brewers are the Brewers right now is because of him and then bringing them up to the major league level and making them either talent to trade or talent to, to play. Yeah. And and he is David Stearns. That's a, such a signing. That's such a deal that is so overlooked sometimes. And all of this starts with him because it's going to be the Mets will be good because of him for a long time. And that's where the Mets really struggled, right? That's where they really struggled under uh, Brody um, Van Wagenen. Okay. Brody Van Wagner, where they just had no front office, they had no analytics, they had player development. What are they doing? That's a big question. It was when you bring a guy like that and he sets the table, he builds the concrete for the foundation and sets the tone, and then it's just let the players play. If they don't have August, September, though, like, I, I, yeah, maybe the manager's around just because he's a new manager, but at the end of the day, like, hot seats happen really quick in New York, and it would have been hard to manage uh, under that type of hot seat. Now, this helps out a lot, but if they come out next year and they're 500 again, the first couple months, and there's going to be a lot, there's the exact same questions just going to come up. And that's going to be hard to do, especially when you have Pete Alonso leaving and you've got a lot of issues with your lineup uh, other than they got really hot. He's not leaving. That home run against the Brewers kept him a Met. Well, he's still going to be a free agent. He's not going anywhere. I, I don't think there's any chance he goes anywhere now. Maybe. I, I don't think he should go anywhere. I, I'm, I'm in this boat, but I remember there were times when, where, where there was conversations and, and you were equally saying, I don't know if they should have signed him back for the money. A lot of people were saying, don't sign him back. And then all of a sudden, he does this Pete Alonzo normal things. And they're like, oh, sign him back. It's like, what? Where, where were you in April? Listen, it's all going to come down to the money, like we know. And I yeah. kind of have an idea, and you know me. As soon as the season's over, the prognosticator of prognosticators will return, and I will tell you exactly how much everybody's going to sign for. And as you know, I'm pretty damn accurate with that, except for Otani. That was ridiculous. Well, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, to completely now stop talking about the Mets, which I'm totally fine with. We got to go to the American League for re really quick here. Yankees, Royals. Um, I'm just going to say the American League side. 
the the Yankees have the probably their greatest opportunity to to go straight into the World Series that they've ever had and maybe in the history that I've been alive um, and the Yankees are in the playoffs it has absolutely been set up perfect the the Royals are, are who they're playing right now one nothing in that series Texas or the um, I always say Texas I don't know why I always say this but the Tigers and, and the Guardians are playing the on the other side again the, I don't want to say anything bad about these teams but they're no big boy super big dog team where you're just sitting there like the Mets Phillies whoever comes out of that you're looking at that other series going oh uh oh and the Dodgers Padres looking at that other series going oh uh oh I don't want any of those teams that that on the American League side it's a lot different there's yeah. no Astros hanging out there there's no Rangers with some monster payroll and, and dudes coming coming out on that side there's no Orioles there's no Red Sox where you know you just some monster Red Sox team that's coming in for you or a scrappy Rays team it is a setup perfect where it's American League Central and the Yankees. Could this be any better for Yankees just to, to roll into the World Series? No, there, there's no opportunity. But you said it. These other teams in the American League, they don't have that pedigree. You know, they're all young teams. Nobody was expecting any of them to go to the World Series. And they did a great job. All these teams, you know, I, I love the Royals. Bobby Wood Jr., I'm buying his baseball cards yes. like there's no tomorrow. But you don't look at them like they're ready yet. And no. that's why you have to give the Yankees the advantage because they have the veteran leadership on those teams. Would I be shocked if the Yankees lost? No, because I don't think they're a very good team. No, and I think that's the thing. Would I be shocked? No. But I also sit there and say that if they lose, it's because the other team beats them. Yes. The other teams, are, and, and again, the Royals have been great all season. The the Guardians have been amazing all season long. And the Tigers have been the hottest team in baseball, minus the Padres, since the All Star break. Okay. So when we, and, and, and the, the Padres have been hot, but you, I would say the, the amount of, the amount of gain that the Tigers have made far out goes what the Padres did. Like they made bigger gains than anybody else in baseball. And so, if they lose to any of those teams, I wouldn't be shocked. But again, when you go man for man up and down these rosters, um, throw the money out the door to say, hey, who's a better baseball player? The Yankees have it on every single mm -hmm. level outside of maybe Jose Ramirez and Bobby Witt. Those are might be the only two guys and Class A. Yeah, but again, neither one. But Scooble, neither one of those guys at, at Scooble, like you're lining up. Okay, Scooble, Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, maybe not this year, but Scooble, Scooble was what Garrett Cole was last year, and then no Rondon, and you're sitting there going, all of these guys, but it's just man for man, like the Yankees, they know how to win. They have a team that's done it. They've they've been good all year, and this is a, probably the best opportunity I've seen in a long time. Even with Jose Ramirez and even with Bobby Witt, there's not a they're the third and fourth best player. Because the Yankees have the two best players out of those four teams. Yes. Marcus Stroman. <laughs> who, didn't even, who didn't even make the roster. So they for all of, you, all of you who were giving us grief in the beginning of the year when we were saying that Stroman isn't particularly a good pitcher, he's not the guy that he thinks he is, he's not the ace that he thinks he is, he's not even on the roster for the ALDS. So screw you, Stroman. You suck. He can take his money and go enjoy his time down on his this this lakefront home, beachfront home, whatever it is, and throwing on his dock and bragging about, look at me, I'm throwing bullpens on my dock and doing yoga while I'm doing it. And we're good. I, here's, the, here's the thing about it. Showman's a good pitcher. He's a good pitcher. But we said the thing about it was when the lights turn on, he tends to fall apart. He tends to have real issues when it goes on. When it's Stroman time and he, he can dig in, he can dance around and do his little strikeout dance and like this, you don't see him doing it when he sucks. That's my problem is, is if you're going to pimp it, pimp it when you're bad. If you're going to own it, own it when you're bad. And yeah. That's the only thing I haven't seen out of him. And I'm sorry to let everybody know, but we were right. And I am not going to actually apologize for being right. I apologize for you guys being wrong. And by the way, Pimp Stroman, if you're going to pimp, at least realize that your ERA has gone up every year for the last five years. Oh, oh, oh Marcus Stroman. God, it hurts. It hurts to be right. Um, now, when we're looking at the playoffs in the hole, Yankees 
or Dodgers, James, who has more pressure to win, the Yankees or Dodgers? Yankees with a huge move, obviously bringing back Judge, um, and then the Soto trade, and, and you're putting a lot of money in that in that starting rotation. Um, the Dodgers side, they nobody spent more money than Dodgers. I don't think. I mean, there's there's like I don't think France has spent more money than Dodgers. Maybe Italy. I don't know. The GDP is probably right up there. With Yamamoto. You're talking about Otani. You're talking about basically any free agent that, that they wanted to get and they could go get restructured deals for everybody who has more pressure to win the world series yankees or dodgers uh to me it's got to be the dodgers you went out and you spent a billion dollars on two players you got the best player on the planet you got the best free agent pitcher in yamamoto if they don't win the world series this year dave roberts ought to be gone and I like Dave Roberts as a manager, but let's take a look at what Dave Roberts has done since he has been the manager of the Dodgers. They have gone to the playoffs almost every single year, and the only time they won the World Series is that strike-shortened year. It reminds me a lot of the Braves, where everybody was talking about how great the Braves were, but they couldn't put it all together when it counted. So right now, as we're talking, I'm Googling something. Do you know what I'm Googling? Um, how to grow hair? Uh, no, because I know how to do that. It's I can't. I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I can take it from my back and probably put it up there. I am, uh, but a man with great hair. And throw it out out there. Maybe it's thinning now, but he did have great. When we used to work out together, had great hair. I searched Aaron Boone's playoff record. How do you think that is? You know, you're talking about you're talking about uh, Dave Roberts being on the hot seat, like. <laughs> but what? But the, what? Yan- but the Yankees. The Stephen A. Smith record. You got to be kidding me! You got to be kidding me! Dave Roberts is not on the hot seat compared to Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone is more, a lot more on the hot. He's on the hot seat right now. No, um, in all reality, it is not even close. It is not even close. Now, why? While they spent all the money in the world, and while the Dodgers should be winning World Series hand over fist, but what's what's not a, forget a couple things. How long is Otani and Yamamoto signed for? That's a, just one question. Till two thousand ninety-seven. Until the moon hits the Earth, right? Basically. Yeah. Um, how long is uh, is Juan Soto in town for with the Yankees? Just till the end of the year, when the Mets sign him and bring him to Queens. Exactly. The Yankees have everything that they have to win. They are built right now. They are built someday. They are built this year. They are built right now to win. They've got too much money. They've got the the roster money wise about the same with the with the Dodgers. I don't know. I don't have the numbers right in front of me. I, I know some people are right off the top of the head know that, but they are built to win right now, and they are built. This team is built to get there and to win. If they don't get to the World Series, he is immediately fired. I disagree so much. If they on don't so many win the World better. Series, the only thing they can do is have a great World Series and play tough and be right in it and lose. And he, that's the only way he's keeping his job. Dave you Roberts. Stop. Dave Roberts is safe. He's safe as long as they get to the World Series. He's totally fine. If they don't get to the World Series, I mean, even if they lose this this playoff series and it's tight, he still might have a job. And I don't think the Dodgers have a much as much pressure because at the same time. All those dudes are walking back next year. Plus, the entire rotation is going to be healthy. All twenty of them, bullpen's going to be healthy. They've got they they got money to spend, which is crazy. They will have money to spend next year because there there's going to be free agents stuff like this. And I, the Dodgers are built for for five more years. They are built for this. The Yankees are not, and that's my problem with this. Okay, and that's what you said. The Yankees are not built for the next five years. They're not even built now. They're not the better team. I mean, you said that, oh, the money is equal, but the talent isn't even close. I don't understand how you could say that the Yankees have more pressure because if you sit there and you look at the Yankees all year, they haven't been close to the team that the Dodgers are. I mean, Um, you look at up and down that lineup. Who's got more wins? Again, to me, it, the Yankees are not a good, a, a well-constructed team. The Dodgers are far better constructed. Dodgers, two, $241 million payroll. Yankees, $309 million payroll. Big deal. 
because oh, no, they, but you're talking about like but these are the things that 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 we talk about right so that's a that's a 50 million dollar 60 million dollar difference and then we're, we're talking about playoff records and and one of those guys has a world series title the other doesn't i get it in a shortened season but at the same time they've had a lot more success they've they've they, the Dodgers, to me, are built for years, and so you have a manager everybody trusts. The Yankees are built for now, and if if they if they break it up, like if it's Juan Soto doesn't come back, they're probably going to change the face. Like Aaron Aaron Boone hasn't brought anything to them. Dave Roberts has, but that's because Aaron Boone doesn't have any options because he's basically a yes man. They look at the analytics and they say, Aaron Boone, you should do this. But just because they've spent no, no, more no. money, they're the same. Mean- they're exactly the same. Don't stop thinking managers are anything but yes men. They're all, every single manager is a yes man. Even like, I love them, even Terry Francona. Every single one of them are yes man nowadays. They are, they are doing what middle, they they are, a, they are there for the players. They make the players happy, make them comfortable. That's all they do. They are there for the players. They are no longer setting up lineups and, and actually calling stuff. They're making their decisions based on booklets that are telling them what to make the decision on. But the Yankees, you're talking about how much money they spent. They're giving uh, Gene Carlos Stanton $35 million a year. He's yep. awful. DJ LeMayhew is awful. Rizzo is awful. Uh, Glaber Torres is awful. The, the alien, Jason Dominguez, he he looked like he was on roller skates in the outfield the, you know, in the last series. How can you say that they have more pressure when they clearly don't have the horses that the Dodgers do? They have more wins, and they've not won it. They have won a World Series. They have won a World Series under Aaron Boone, and you got your best player, second best player, leaving. Sorry, more pressure. All right, more pressure, guys. Please go into the comments. Tell me what you think because I can't. I I feel like I'm taking stupid pills. Yeah, yeah, you are stupid. So there you go. Appreciate it. But speaking of two players, people that took stupid pills, maybe it's the Orioles, uh, maybe the rest of the playoff. What do you got on the Orioles out of the playoffs already, James? Very disappointing. I expected yeah. to see more out of Gunnar Henderson. I expected to see more out of Adley Rushman. But that's why I was saying a few weeks ago when we were looking at what the Orioles need next year, they are the team that desperately needs Juan Soto. Billionaire owner. Ooh, and- here's, here's the tough part. You know what, crazy? I don't want. I, I'm cutting you off. I, I I hate it when people say I don't mean to cut you off. I mean to cut you off. Everybody means to cut you off. I just feel bad about it. Um, I don't. Juan Soto, what position is he going to play? Let him DH. Who cares <laughs> at this no, point? No, in all reality, though, what position is he going to play? It's right a good field. question. Yeah. Who's their right fielder right now? Oh God. Um, Santander. Santander. Yes, I know. You have. have you you have, look at his numbers. I know he was incredible. And he's going to be a free agent. Yeah. Like, that to me is a hard spot because they want to. I'm like, dude, sign him, sign him, sign him, sign him, sign him, figure it out. And then you're but you're just replacing a man for a man. Like, you're replacing, like, so move, you didn't necessarily get a lot better. You can move Santander to left. Yeah, he's a free agent, though. So I'm just saying, like, so sign both. there needs to be another one, right? There needs to be another. You have new owners. You have a lot of money coming in. There mm-hmm. needs to be more. Um Outside of Juan Soto, just say Juan Soto doesn't sign there because Juan Soto, dude, who knows? There's gonna, it's going to be so crazy. Yeah. What is going to make them different? How how do you truly make this team better? You need to add uh, two starting pitchers because you don't know about Boo Burns. Burns might be gone. And then you need yeah. to add a closer. Once you do that and you get a professional hitter, I would love to see a guy like J.D. Martinez who always makes everybody better by the way he prepares uh, I, I, that's to me what you need to do with that team, because what happened was a disgrace. They should have never lost the first round, and only so, scored one run. So Felix Bautista is going to be back, who was arguably the best closer in baseball until Emmanuel Class A be, decided to become like I don't know, like sign a deal with the devil or something, whatever he did. Yes, you're going to have Corbin Burns is going to be gone. Zach Eflin's going to be there. Gene Kramer, you got Kyle Bradish, John Means, Bradish and Means will be out for a little while tyler wells will be out grayson uh rodriguez should be back so you have guys you have we know the lineup everybody knows how good this lineup is i think this is i think it's i don't want to say exactly like who they should sign or, or position wise their biggest thing that they're missing on this team is veteran leadership is a dude that's been there done that 
you know, we talk about Salvador Perez, you know, the Royals who, who beat him. And, and by the way, a crazy series. I mean, three runs to one run. It's amazing that th that series was that's how two games ended up um, being finished. And the Royals by the Royals won the series by three. Runs. They had three runs. They just don't have that veteran that they can just rely upon, that they know that's coming off the bench, that grabs them in the locker room. That's the Manny Machado grabbing the team and doing a, a team speech in the dugout when, when everything's going crazy, everybody's like acting out of control, brings them back in. They don't have a Johnny Gomes. They don't have that guy that just they can grab a, a Mike Sweeney. Like these veteran, that's what they bring in this leadership. Everybody's wants to, they have the youngest team in baseball, basically. Everyone's so young and they're so talented, but you don't have anybody on the team minus Burns Who's, who still even playoff experience is, is limited yeah. with the Brewers, no, never really been all that deep, and that's it. Like, you don't have anybody that's ever sit back and just made you know, run after run after run and, and tough situations and come back from behind and won a World Series with no expectations, and they don't have that guy. That's what they need. I don't even want to change a whole lot in the lineup. I mean, bring Santan there back. Like, don't even bring Soto. Like, if you don't want to go out there and spend $500 million, bring Santan there back, and I'm good. Just bring um just go get me some dudes that literally just all they do is win so all trade for you darvish and get justin turner on the team justin turner he's a guy you know like let some of these guys like hey, justin turner's great too but i would i would even go i don't know like go in the well for some other guys you know, go in the well and, and find a backup catcher find the find a d you know backup first baseman that just is going to sit there and just show up at practice every day round up the troops, get them out there, get their asses motivated in the locker room, wreak some havoc, and, and, and make sure the culture isn't, oh, hey, we're good. The culture is World Series, motherfuckers. I'm with you. I didn't say it. I, I almost said it. I, said, I didn't you say said it. it. I, I, I did. You said it. I did. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going, like, this is getting my heart pounding because it's so frustrating to see that this team is so good. And they're just not quite there yet. They should sign a player bullpen coach named David Ardsma. Yes. Then well, here's the thing: is veteran relievers are great. Veteran relievers are good. Like they're good for it. At the end of the day, though, they don't make waves in the locker room the same way that hitters do, or like even start the starting pitchers. Yeah. Like, not the same. Like it's good though. Like when you've got your bullpen and you're out there and you're all by yourself, you need a dude. Shake that, shake them up a little bit. Let them know, like, hey, wait, we're better than whatever we're doing right now. We're better than this. Let's go. Like, act like it. You know, be a man, be a team. Um, but you need some guys in that locker room that can grab somebody, throw them up against the locker, and let them remind them that, like, to play baseball right. You know, like, behind closed doors, handle handle your business. I know. Bring back Albert Bell. He'll grab everybody by the neck and get them excited. We, I said, veteran leadership, not veteran. Veteran leadership. Okay. Much very different. Very <laughs> Much different. Speaking of um, leadership, uh, Nick Saban is out of Alabama. Okay, I'm throwing a curveball here. We don't talk about college football in here at all. You don't even like college football. I, I don't get it because you're a New Yorker. That's just what what it is. It's different up there than than South and West. And it's it's very simple. It's you know, you have two of every team, so that kind of dominates the sports talk airwaves. So there's really no room for it. And the only the, the other difference is, you know, around the country, people tend to go away to school a lot more than they do in New York. So, you know, you have very few people who say like, "Oh, I went to Duke." Like, oh no, everybody went to SUNY Albany. They went to SUNY Binghamton. They went to. We also Brooklyn don't have College. football that matters up there. You know, football that matters. If Rutgers was a dominant college football team, you'd start hearing about it. They suck. That, yeah. That's just the problem. Maryland sucks. Like, like there's nothing. There's no one in New York that that really even matters. There's no one north of you that really matters, and no one close to you that matters. And and it's basketball because the college basketball dominated. Like when when St. Joe's or St. John's or whatever, like all those schools are and uh, Syracuse. Syracuse. Like when they're all good, they they cause waves. Or like even an Ivy League team when they when they get in the playoff, you know, like and they're like really good. Like back when Princeton was good, or a year or two when when some of these other schools are good, they cause waves. But James, this was a crazy week, and, and I got I got to throw this out to you. Like Nick Saban, we're talking about college leadership. He's gone. Our number one team in the, in the country, Alabama, loses to Vanderbilt. What's great is Nick Saban said back in the day, the only school we should never lose to is Vanderbilt. 
at Vanderbilt. They, Vanderbilt beat them in, in at Vanderbilt. The number four team in the country lost. Tennessee lost to Arkansas. The number nine team in the country lost. The number 10 team in the country lost. The number six team should have lost like two weeks in a row. Um, what would it ever take you, James? Like this is one of the most exciting college football weekends there, there ever was that, that so many teams lost. What would it take you to actually get into college football? I don't think there's anything that can be done to get me into college sports. I just, it, it's not part of my DNA. I know I didn't grow up with it. Never cared about it. I don't think there's anything that could happen. That sucks. That sucks. It is so fun. Penn state, dude, I got to get you on my Penn state bandwagon. Um, I think right now they're like number six in the country. That might even be better than that. So let's go to a Penn state game. Maybe if I go to it, it'd be more interesting to me. I am actually going to go um, as far as right now. I'm going to go the Penn State Minnesota game in Minnesota. They're number four in the country, dude. Number four. The the number two, three, and four schools are all in the Big Ten. Me. Okay. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry. That's so pathetic. I'll watch that over the WNBA if it makes you feel better. What about this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like the NFL, right? I have a love-hate relationship with the NFL because I'm a Jet fan. You're a Jet fan. That's why I, I was about to hit you with the Jet question. Who is more disappointing this year, the New York Jets or J.D. Cincinnati Bengals? Well, considering that I said the Jets would go to the Super Bowl, for me, it's the Jets. But I think overall, uh, in the vast world of uh, sports fandom, it's got to be the Bengals. I mean, you, we were talking about it before the season started. The the Bengals just have a great quarterback, and there's no reason why they should be one and four. But their defense is awful. They can't stop anybody. Whereas opposed to the Jets, anybody. they can't score, uh, even with Aaron Rodgers. I, I've got to say that Joe Burrow's team is far more disappointing, and it's not even Joe Burrow's fault. I actually completely agree, disagree with you. The thing about this, and then this is the, this is my the reason behind it. Um, while the Bengals have lost, they're one and four. We'll put that to the side. Their defense is bad. I think the Jets are. You're you're seeing a lot more problems with the Jets. You're seeing holes in the defense. Not they're not great. They're not horrible, but you're they're not, definitely not great. Um, you're seeing a lot of issues with the coaching staff and your your star quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. You're seeing issues with Aaron Rodgers and your wide receivers. You're seeing Aaron, issues with Aaron Rodgers and his and his calls at the line of scrimmage. Uh, I'm not seeing anything out of the running back. I'm not seeing anything out of their, their star wide receiver. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of problems there. And this seems like standard jet problems, that it's internal, that it's those type of problems don't tend to get solved unless somebody gets fired. Where I'm seeing the Bengals... And and follow the bouncing ball here on this is they, they number one, first week of the year they lost ten to sixteen to the New England pull out absolutely blows my mind right. And then you play the best team in football and you lose 25-26 on a game winning field goal. Then you play Washington thirty three thirty eight and they had the ball with an opportunity to win. They beat Carolina. Then you lose to Baltimore thirty eight forty one on a game losing field goal. They they had a chance to win the game with a field goal. I'm seeing a team. That is so on the cusp of just kicking some other teams' butts offensively with defensive problems. Offense, right now you're rolling. Burrow had one of the greatest games of all time, you know, along with Jamar Chase. So I'm seeing a, so many good things happening on one side and then just bad defense. Yeah. At the same time, like they, they could very easily, I mean, like seriously, like New England game, there was a play in the end zone that was pass interference they didn't call. In the end zone, at, at the end of the ball game. That's a touchdown with an extra point. So right there, along with a kick by 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 the Jets and a kick by Baltimore, they're an undefeated team where they are one loss. Team. That's the problem. That's the difference between good and bad and the Jets. And right now they're bad, but uh, but imme immediately if they just go okay, cool, they make that kick and they they hold the Jet or they don't get a penalty called on them by the Chiefs and they don't get a and they get that call clearly pass interference in the end zone right now they're they're a four and one team with first place uh, in the north rolling into uh the giants into new york to beat up the giants 
Well, you didn't ask me which is the which team is worse. You asked me which team is in more trouble. Well, that's why. That's what I'm saying though. Is like if when you're when you're sitting there looking at ball games, and you're like, well, they lost the, the pass interference in the end zone. You're like, you would have the ball in the one. They missed the field goal to win the game. Okay. Well, that's the, the, against the best team in football against the Chiefs. They 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 got they got beat by a field goal to end the game. Like, and, and you're still looking at like every single game they've lost. They're either down by a field goal or like within five, like or six. Like, you're so close to being that team where you go, oh, watch out, like heads up right now. Because right now, if I'm the rest of the league, I'm going. Their record's bad. Well, I do not want to play the Bengals right now. I do no, not want to play the Bengals. You certainly don't want to play them under any circumstance. They're still a great team. Um, but when you're one and four, that's a much bigger hole to dig out of than the two and three Jets. Because the Jets, let's not forget, they're going to play the Patriots. Patriots aren't that good. They're going to play the Bills. The Bills are good, but they're not great. They're, you they're, don't beatable. Know, they're beatable. Miami, their quarterback situation doesn't scare anybody right now. So they at least have the possibility of coming back and getting into a wild card because they're not going to be playing a lot of great teams as opposed to the Bengals that they still have a division that has the Chiefs. No, without a doubt. I think at this point you're just looking at you're you're, you're saying this and saying they're they're a wild card team at best. Yeah. The Jets could could actually miraculously still win the probably the East if they go out there and beat up on the on Buffalo and, and that's their that's their key and then win those games they should. They could still win the East, but I'm still I I, I if I threw these two teams together I'm, and saying who's gonna make the playoffs, I'm putting my money all day long right now on the on the Bengals. Okay, for what it is. Yeah, that's fair. For what it is. Um. <sighs> Moving on, unfortunately, we had a couple of deaths last week, a couple of superstars. We, we lost them. Um, Dikembe Mutombo, throw this one out there, man, the, the man, the myth, the legend of the, the Denver Nuggets back in the day. I think he also played for Atlanta Hawks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who else he played for? It didn't matter to me, man. He was the Denver Nuggets because I grew up growing up in Denver being – enjoying the nuggets i i don't want to sit there and say man i was a huge nba fan by any means i was a nugget fan i enjoyed the nba i enjoyed jordan i mean who, who didn't really at the time i enjoyed houston at, you know with the large one and quite Drexler. um and not quite Drexler. um who am i thinking of yeah. what on on houston on houston back in the day yeah, the same cassell they had robert ory they had they had Olajuwon. a ton of guys. okay you know later on later on they had uh you yeah. know around the they they had yao ming they had charles barkley they had a lot of guys yeah um i enjoyed that team a lot but 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 to really it was that denver nuggets team is when they beat the uh supersonics in the playoffs number one being the number or number eight being the number one team first time all time that ever happened and and Dikembe laying on the ground crying holding the basketball like mm -hmm. to me that was one of my greatest basketball memories what do you what do you got in uh, Dikembe um probably didn't get the respect that he deserved for how good he was he was God. a defensive oh. genius he blocked everybody and it's really funny because Michael Jordan until the very end of Dikembe Mutombo's career never dunked on him it took him forever to dunk on Matumbo. Matumbo was, you know, gray and playing with the with Atlanta before Michael Jordan broken could actually him. dunk on him. He was, yeah, he was broken. So that tells you just how good Matumbo was at defense. If if he's stopping MJ, he's stopping guys. Um, One of the things that you had said, which which caught me right there, was defensive genius, and that's a thing that you don't realize. Like when you watch the the Bulls. Um, video like the, the the dynasty video, whatever the last one was. The right? last dance. The last dance. And you're watching about Dennis Rodman, and you're like, okay, you see the outside, the appearance, and, and with Dem Dikembe, you see this, and you see the blocked, you see the rebounds with 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 Dennis, and you see the the appearance, and like the bulldog kind of like kind of fight you before anybody else knows we need to fight type of thing. What you don't realize is the work he put in, right? The, the the rebounds and just studying how a rebound worked and just studying the physics of angles of shots and putting himself in a position to get the rebound. He didn't just show up and outwork you or out-rebound you. He put himself in positions to get the rebound, and you're sitting there going, how did he – why why did I, he get and I didn't? And Dikembe, what you don't real never realize was how much work he put into positioning himself to make a block, to be a be in the middle. He didn't just step back, have his guy, and then just work his way over to you. 
he strategically would move with you and strategically position himself to where he would take away your shot. Mm -hmm. That's the thing he didn't get enough credit for was the positioning before the block happened and how smart he was in seeing a play happen. He didn't just stand there in the middle, go like this and say, yeah, let's go. He would move and move and move. And then all of a sudden he's you're like, yeah, you don't have no shot, dude. Like, stop, but don't shoot this ball. And that's why you can stop a guy like MJ. That's where MJ pr prided himself on outworking you, out angling you, out knowing you where you're going to be. And he couldn't figure out Dikembe because Dikembe was on the same level working just in a different position. I just wish he could have been a better shooter like in today's game and, and taken an offensive part of the game where he just could dominate something. Mm -hmm. instead of just being the low man on the defense and he would have he'd be in a conversation of greatest of all time yeah he definitely wasn't Olajuwon but he had the footwork defensively that Olajuwon did without a doubt and, and talking about footwork one of the greatest uh baseball players of all time Pete Rose passed away as well um defensively amazing uh, base path amazing one of the most famous plays all time in baseball where, where he where he stole or he get going home and he took out the catcher in an all-star game um charlie hustle who had who ended up having the most hits of all time in major league history passed away um what is your takeaway on p rose uh, uh controversial to say the least uh beloved by some you still see threads every day on facebook about put him in the hall of fame there are the people who love him there are the people that hate him i'm kind of in between i think about the last conversation that pete and i had i invited him to our podcast that we had years ago i wanted him to debate you about whether or not um, he belonged in the Hall of Fame. He refused because he said that I don't need to debate David Ardsma whether or not I belong in the Hall of Fame. It would have been a great interview, but unfortunately it didn't come to fruition. I do not think that Pete should get into the Hall of Fame now. I think it's over. Uh, let the man rest in peace. Just stop with the Hall of Fame. It's done. Yeah, I... You know where I stand on this. I, I, I pass, somebody passing away has no merit on me on whether they should be in the Hall of Fame or not. Minus um, Kirby Puckett and Doc Holliday. Like that's like you're like, just put them in right now. You know, like the, you're they're a Hall of Famer. Why are we waiting? Just do it. Like it's it's relevant. We shouldn't have to wait. Outside of that, um, I've only heard one argument ever. And I heard it when he when he passed away that that would make me even remotely consider him in the Hall of Fame, and it was Tom Brennerman, and he was talking about um, or it was Bob Costas, one of the two. I think they both mentioned it. So I want to make sure I just throw both both of them out there, so no one's one or the other. And they said the one thing I've al one thing I've always believed in is the Hall of Fame and the museum are two different things. The players deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Are you a Hall of Fame player or not? Whether no matter what the story is behind you, are you a Hall of Fame player or not? Pete Rose is a Hall of Fame player. Barry Bonds a Hall of Fame player. I would even say Manny Ramirez. All these guys are Hall of Fame players. Then you have the museum. The museum tells the story. The museum tells the story of baseball and let the museum give the context. The Hall of Fame is, are you a Hall of Fame player or not? Now there's rules in the Hall of Fame allow you to bring in or not and, and steroids to me that means you're a cheater um like man ramirez is a cheater a rod's a cheater you, you can't be in like we had rules saying you can't do this they did it gambling means you're cheating i mean it means part of that you're you're, you're cheating now brenneman and and, and bob costas both said this he gambled and as far as we know and everything we've ever seen only after he was done playing as he was managing that's the closest argument I've ever heard to why he should be in the Hall of Fame. Is as a player, he's a Hall of Fame baseball player. As a manager, he is a gambler and an addict who got himself barred. Under that, I might have a, a I, I, I would engage a conversation about whether he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame or not. I, I still, to me, considering his history, his lying is just nonstop lying, nonstop lying, and nonstop lying about it. And they broke the cardinal rule of baseball and that they changed the rule of being barred after he cheated that or like whatever it was um that still stops me from wanting him in at the same time i just don't trust that he wasn't doing it while he was playing now some some people would say this 
he gambled only on his team to win. But he didn't gamble on his team to win every day. To me, that's also showing that you're not can't, you're gambling against like you believe you'll lose that day. That's why you didn't gamble, and and that's just as bad as gambling on your team to lose. I cannot believe anything he ever said. So if he says I only gambled on them to win, I can't believe that. I can't believe that he never gambled on the team before he uh, before he stopped playing. It's very likely in my mind that he did it while he was playing. I just can't believe anything that he said. So he was given a lifetime ban. He was banned. He doesn't belong in. Done. Yeah. And that's it. That's the end of the day for me. Now, like I said, I'll, I will sit there and engage the conversation about his um, manager versus player side at the same time, like the amount of lying. I can't trust that he wasn't lying. Now, now I want to see the files. I want to see everything and, and see like what Major League Baseball came up with, what the investigator came up with. Like we we had he had chances to get back in this game. And he kept lying. And then yeah. more story would come out. And then he'd lie again. Then more story would come out. So it was just let's stop with this, guys, and just sit back and remember, greatest player of all time doesn't mean you're allowed in doesn't mean that you just the rules don't apply to you because if he wasn't the greatest of all time we wouldn't even have this conversation you say yeah you should be banned but he's the greatest he's one, he's one of the greatest the greatest hitter let's just say this the greatest base hitter of all time and probably the greatest hustler of all time hardest player of all time minus i wouldn't even give him the base hit, i wouldn't even give him the best base hitter of all time if you really want to know maybe ty cobb like those guys oh, okay. tony Gwynn. tony Gwynn. okay but he did things tony Gwynn couldn't do you know, that's that's the end of the day. He did things Tony Gwynn couldn't do, and and there's it's just an interesting argument because he was so good. That's what made and he was such a liar. That's what makes him so controversial. And to me, though, it's let him be controversial. At the end of the day, he's a liar, and that's why he's not in. Like that's why he's not in. He, he's a he cheated and he's a liar about it. Um, and it's weird because I have this weird stance, right? Like I, I think he shouldn't be in. I think steroid users should be in. I think the moment though we started testing, steroid users shouldn't be in. It, it, like any PED user shouldn't be in. And so it's a weird, I have this weird stance, like who who get in. Like I'm Barry Bonds, like Roger Clements, you're in, dude. Uh A Rod, nope. Hell no. Fernando Tatis. Nope. Nope. Junior. No. Hell no. Um, like I yeah. I okay, re really, really quick. Really yeah. quick, because I know we're up against it right now. Fernando Tatis, if he hits 500 home runs from now until the end of his career, post getting busted for steroids, you know he's being tested more because he's a steroid guy. If he hits 500 home runs and hits 300 for the rest of his career from this point on, is he a Hall of Famer? No. Okay. No, he made a choice. To me, he's not. He made a choice. Like, that what's saying when Barry, who did Barry, when did Barry Bonds stop? Did he stop before he had 73 home runs? Did he stop before? Like, he could have hit 500 home runs after he did, like, right? Like, like he could have did it. And then, like, and then, like, you're just still seeing the effects. Who knows? Roger Clemens did it. Like, the problem is there's steroid users in the Hall of Fame. And then we're telling other steroid users it can't be because we didn't like you. Because you weren't likable to the media. You didn't sit there and, and plead, plead, please the media well enough. That's my problem with a lot of this, and that's your problem. I know that too. But you brought Tatis up. Right now, I'm going to give you some names. Who is the biggest villain in baseball? Uh, Bryce Harper, Tatis, Machado. Um, do you have anybody else you want to throw in there? I think Machado, he's, he's kind of been moved on. He's no longer like – Yeah, going. I think it's Tatis he tried right to be now. for a little bit. I can't think of anybody other than Tatis because Bryce Harper, I, I love him. You know this. I, I can't I even. I, I, God, I couldn't stand him for a little bit. Now I, I'm like, I'm in his corner, dude. I'm like, he picked the best city in the world to go to. In all reality, he Philly, he is such a blue collar Philly. Now he's like worked. It just you kind of picture him showing up to feel a little dirty hands and like like a little grease on there, like he was fixing like, like his old car or something like that before he shows up the game, a little grease in his beard or something. You you were not a fan of Bryce Harper at all. I, I love that you turned I, your uh, you changed your opinion about him. At the end of the day, because they sat there and you you look at it, you hear it from teammates, you you see it in the locker room, you see him in the dugout. Like it's a different man than what he used to be. God, he, this, he used to not run out pop ups. God, this really to... sucks. Can you can you believe that my two favorite non Mets are the teams that the Mets are going to be playing this round and the next round? Right. Mm. 
That's awful. Ha! But we'll end it right there. Another great episode of Closers, uh, man, brought to you by Man Cave Sports. Make sure you like us. Make sure you send out a shout out to everybody you know and um, like, comment, everything because it helps us. It helps us huge. Tell your friends. Um, tell your girlfriend. Tell your tell your uh, wife all about us. Um, and then uh, show some love, man. Show some love to us. So thanks for watching. Beautiful. <laughs>